what do you hope for? What do I hope for? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I hope to finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like, hoping to finish isn't even the right way to say it. I guess I know. I know I'm going to finish unless something catastrophic happens. Yeah. I'll be finishing. What do I hope? I hope people just start paying attention to what we're doing, and I hope people understand why we're doing it, and I hope people it resonates with people so that they feel um, inclined or you know compelled to donate. That's what I hope. Day one, how was it for you guys? How was it for you? <laughs> well, day one, day one, there was a lot of anxiety, emotion, mm -hmm. excitement, just because of all the excitement around it. Yeah, like. yeah. Um, the running part was it was hard, man. The first day was tough mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I was excited, and I was like, you know, the whole year almost kind mm -hmm. of anticipation, and so I kind of went out fast, and then it was really hot. <laughs> it was really <laughs> hot, yeah. and it was really smoky, and I hadn't taken into consideration the smoke much, and so I started developing headaches and stuff. And um, it took a while to get done. I think, what was it, like five and a half hours? Yeah, the first day, a I mean, little bit longer because he's been closer to five hours mm -hmm. some of the other days, but, but it yeah, wasn't that bad but considering. It just felt like yeah. I knew for the next day after the first one, I was rocked because I was bagged. I was tired. My face mm -hmm. didn't look great. Even if you look at some of those um, <laughs> that end of day that I did for the first one, you could see the first two days that my face was just, mm -hmm. I was just off. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I use a whoop strap, to, uh, a whoop strap to track my recovery and sleep and all this kind of stuff, and my my respiratory rate and blood and all that kind of stuff. And um, it was at two percent the next morning, <laughs> so it was like at the lowest it could get. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Holy moly, what was that?" So I had to reflect on what was going on. And and for me, I think it was you know going too fast at right. the beginning, expending too much energy, and the smoke. I think that's what really affected. So. It was kind of, you know, the second and third days were kind of good because we were able to recalibrate and figure out how to do things a little bit better. And so we kind of recovered from the error of the first day and uh, managed the rest of it after. So, yeah, it was good. For the, for the listeners, Julia, you on the first day were following Satch from behind. This was in Revelstoke and the RCMP actually escorted you guys to the highway which was phenomenal. I thought that was amazing to see that happen. Yeah, that was really great. Yeah. If, if that RCP is ever listening. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, nice. it was awesome. Cause we, I think you mentioned to go there, right? I think, and we went there and then we chatted them up and they said, yeah, we'd be happy to escort you to the, to the highway, which was kind of helpful. Cause I didn't realize how busy Revelstoke is, even though the population is about 7,000. Thank you. Even though the population is about 7,000, um, it's like, it seems like a lot of tourists were there. No. So it was, it was super busy. <clears throat> so uh, it was nice to have the, the escorts to get to the highway. And then once we we're on the highway, we just mm -hmm. kind of kept going. I really appreciated it for day one too, because I've never been a, a like a escorted uh, an, a runner before support, yeah. <laughs> or vehicle support or anything like that so I was able to ask the RCMP just so just to make sure I was being careful and doing things right and I don't know not pissing off the other drivers <laughs> well I mean <laughs> I, I think at the end of the day like um you some drivers are going to get irritated right it's oh, yeah. the, nature of the, the nature of what's happening but fortunately or we can mitigate it as much as we can with having a couple, you know, we had magnet signs on, on, on the car, on the truck so that yeah. people who are driving behind uh, Julia can see, you know, fundraising and progress for veterans and first responders and has some pictures on it. Mm -hmm. So that at least that way people understand why this vehicle is going slow. So I think for the most part, yeah, you're going to get some people that aren't too pleased, but once they see the sign and then drive by, they, I, I haven't experienced any negativity. So. No, it's been great. That's like, good. You're not stuff. getting people honking yet? Or maybe if they are, it's in positive. It's positive. It's positive. It's positive once they see the signs. Yeah, really positive. They're waving to him or they're they're driving ahead, pulling over to shake his hand or meet him, which is amazing. Yeah. I'm surprised, Julia, you don't have a cigarette lighter in there with a beacon on top of the light going. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> not this time. Not this time. <laughs> not this time. Well, I mean, in, typically when we, there are escorts, that's what happens, right? So, like, uh, you get like a beacon on the top and just kind of make it make it happen, even if you're in an unmarked or a, yeah, an unmarked vehicle, right? Yeah. Just the orange light, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and when it comes to you, Satch, what were you listening to in your headphones for day one? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, man. I, I alternate between two styles of music, right? and none of them are English. <laughs> so I I listen to either Punjabi music, from uh, and then I'll um sometimes when I'm getting deep into it, or if after a certain period of time I want to get into a more of a meditative state, so I listen to some quality music. Mm. Um, like Nasser Fateh Ali Khan or what? Exactly. Yeah. It's so I'll listen to him. I'll listen mm -hmm. to him. Um. I can listen to him for hours. So like, I can just kind of keep going and, and yeah, for me, I, I enjoy listening to that sometimes, especially so, when I'm running. The Master Calendar. Not that song particularly, <laughs> but this is a bunch of other ones. Yeah. And yeah. I guess, Julia, what are you doing in the vehicle for hours <laughs> following Satch? I am listening to podcasts. Yeah. I am taking courses. So sometimes I'll, I'll listen to, you know, the teacher mm -hmm. and, uh, normally I'd be at home, like taking notes or being part of the zooms. So I'll just listen in and, and try to remember things and, nice. and stay or take notes later. So courses, yeah. Podcasts, there's, you know, mentorship groups I'm part of. So sometimes I'm part of those zooms, um, while I'm driving, I can just listen, you know, and I have the phone, you know, safely on the, uh, hands-free thing. So it's okay. I can just listen in on those. Um, and he stops maybe for, a break every hour, hour or so. Hour. That's good. Yeah, some yeah. human connection. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, like uh, I have to refuel every hour ish, right? So, and depending if it's super hot outside, I need to cool down too. If there's no water around, mm -hmm. like rivers and that, so I'll um I'll jump in the truck, refuel for about five or ten minutes, and then uh, we'll kick off again. So you're not drinking water the whole way. You're actually running without water for about an hour, give or take. Yeah, I mean, the, you, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because I mean, I can, I mean, I'm used to that. I can do it pretty decently, not, not an issue. But I think I can probably optimize it more. But I still like I feel comfortable just kind of just chilling for an hour, like after the hour, chill for ten minutes, drink it slowly, and then kind of get back out there. I could probably could take it with me, like hold something or have it in my back, like in a, in a pocket or or. A, bolster or something and then while I'm running drink and kind of do it that way and I did that for a couple of days and I was faster those days but at the end of the day I'm not really concerned with how fast I'm moving I just want to have a good experience at least a decent experience um I want to chill a little bit I want to you know it's I don't want to enjoy it as well yeah, I want to enjoy the experience as much as I can so uh I found that um you know taking those you know five or ten minutes in every hour seems to be yeah. decent when you guys look at all of this, has it been what you imagined thus far? So we're at the halfway point, a little bit past the halfway point, but is it exactly what you imagined it, it's going to be like? So you can ask, what do you think? I, it's hard to, I don't know what, what I could have imagined really. I mean, it's... Did you have something in your mind though? Like, oh, this is going to be easy. I've got this. Or, or, or the smoke will be bearable. Yes, it's hard. We know it's hot. But being in it, doing it, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, man. So for me, I can speak for myself from experience. Yeah, I mean, look, I planned certain things and I uh, had envisioned certain things and none of them happened. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it, we had obstacle and obstacle and obstacle from the first yeah. three, four, five, six days. So we had to readjust, adjust on the fly with various different things to make sure that we can keep moving forward. And also, like, even now we're adjusting on the fly like um I'm, I'm even debating changing the end kind of the last few days because i want i've been getting messages from a bunch of people in the lower mainland and um and we weren't really coming to the lower mainland we we're going to squamish and then going straight to the horseshoe bay to nanaimo so now i'm going to just change that whole route so that we can get into the lower mainland do most of it in the more lower mainland and then go to the island for two days mm -hmm. so you know little things like that like we like anything else when you set a plan to something it's not going to be a hundred percent every single time. You just got to be open and uh, flexible enough to adjust and ensure that the ultimate goal gets completed, which is running 42 every single day. It's almost like when people plan their new year's, 
it never goes accordingly, does it? This is going to be the best year ever, best New Year's ever, New Year's Eve, and it's never like that, is it? Any big event yeah. or a trip or anything, it's never exactly what you plan or mm-hmm. what you expect it to be, but... Um, you make do and you, you you just grind through it and yeah, you'll get hits with the hit with the ups and downs, but you just go with the flow. Well, that's the thing, man. And I'm, I'm open and expecting all those things too. Right. So mm. it doesn't knock me down that much. Right. When certain things are happening, I'm like, okay, cool. We'll figure it out and just manage through it. So I just kind of like when we were having a little bit of vehicle issues, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll manage it. And, and we ended up, you know, I want to give a shout out to Sandman Hotels for sure. Yeah. Like they need a, a massive shout out because, you know, they, we were in Revelstoke. They comped our rooms the entire time we were there. Oh my goodness. Right. right? So um, we were supposed to stay there, stay there a couple of days. Then we were having vehicle issues. They comped us the entire time we were there until we could square away the vehicle. And then, um, and then when we got to Kamloops, they had another property there. They uh, helped us out with uh, like a discounted rate, like a significant discount. And now we're going to, um, uh, in the next few days, we'll be, by the weekend, we're going to be in Whistler and Squamish. They have a location in Squamish, Sandman Hotels. So Saturday and Sunday, they're comping us one day and then giving us a family rate on one day. So all because of what we're trying to do, they see value in it. And um, so I want to give them a massive shout out because that that was super helpful, nice. saving a lot of uh, stress on our side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. For the listeners, you guys don't get paid for this. This is your time, your resources for the betterment of society, for the betterment of people, the honor house and veterans and first responders and everyone in between. Yeah, man. I mean, um, look, Julia's taken a lot of time off from her business, so she's taken a hit there. But I I don't even want to call it a hit. Like, it's just, you know, it's a it's a thing that we do just to help. And and we see there's a benefit to Mm -hmm. it. So we want to do it. And then for me, I've been, yeah, my own expense, but also other companies' expenses, as because I've been getting supported by other organizations and mm-hmm. being sponsored by various different individuals, and then also uh, companies. So you know, these other companies, I could list them all off, but I don't want to. You know, there's a bunch of them, so it'd be hard to list them all off. But they've all been supportive, so I hundred percent would not be able to execute any of this on my own. Cause it would be too expensive. It's the cost of doing something like this is like 15, 20 grand. Wow. Right. Just for the month. Like when you're talking about accommodation, food, fuel, gasoline, like all the things that you need to get this done. And then my own food, like I, I'm eating a ton because I'm running a marathon every single day. Right. So my food, like, like if we, a lot, <laughs> it's a lot for the listeners what exactly is a marathon a day so how long is do you have to run to be considered a marathon so it's 42.2 kilometers okay and so i one uh one of my buddies on in, instagram because i keep posting 42.3 right mm-hmm. and um this one buddy of mine he's a, also a lulu lemon ambassador out in ontario i, I want to say windsor or something like that mm-hmm. as andrew kim and he DMs me and he goes, hey, you know that a marathon is 42.19 kilometers, right? I go, yeah, I know. I'm just doing more. <laughs> I want to I want to change, <laughs> change the marathon number to 42.3. No, but I, I don't know. I just want to do 100 extra meters just to, just to be safe that I got the 42.2. <laughs> Doesn't have to question it. <laughs> so so is it, whoop, does it tell you exactly how many you ran for the day or how many steps or how, how do you guys track all this right now? So I track um, the kilometers on my watch. So okay. I have an enduro, a Garmin enduro. It's like an ultra endurance kind of watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are a bunch of these types of watches out there. That yeah. I can get. So when I use that, it tracks it through GPS. And um, yeah, I, I mean, it's as accurate as I can get it. So mm-hmm. I use that to track my um, distance in kilometers. You guys drink some ginger ale ever? <laughs> Random question. I drink, uh, so <laughs> here, man... <laughs> I drank my first Aqua. regular Coke yesterday mm-hmm. in like 20 years. Because because like the greasiest burger yeah. ever. That's the, that's the awesome part about running all these <laughs> all these marathons all these marathons in a row. I can eat whatever because I'm like burning six thousand calories every single day. Yeah. So it's like okay, whatever. Uh, give me a like a Coke because there's no way I can there's no way I can replenish all these calories that I'm burning. So I can just kind of consume whatever and it'll just burn. And I'm the opposite right now. 
<laughs> I have never moved less, <laughs> but it's okay actually. When yeah. we were in Revelstoke, I got out for a few runs with him. Yeah. And I, a couple times of like a few laps here, yeah. but but Revelstoke was nice. It was really nice to be able to run mm -hmm. with you there. Yeah. So but there's always things like consistency that come in mind. But what would you change going forward for the the next or the last bit now? Mm -hmm. So in um in which in which regard like how do you mean mindset? I don't know, man. I'm locked in. Like, I'm, nice. doing, I'm I'm doing them right. There's, I mean, yeah. I was, like, I was, so I was, is there moments together. where you break down where you're like, I can't do this anymore, or how do you? Like, and and when so that happens, what do you do to prevail? I don't know if there's moments where I say, oh, I can't do this. There are moments where like, oh man, I'm tired. <laughs> Like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I I don't think I ever say I can't do this. No, you've never done that. Yeah, I've never said that, right? I think you've gotten stronger. Like the second he passed, it was yesterday when he reached halfway. And then it was just like, okay, it's, you know, in his mind, it's like, oh, Go time. halfway there. So it's done. Yeah. I'm not going to back out of it now. So I think it made him even stronger. I think after the 11, like after halfway, I, I was saying it the other day, I was like, I'm halfway done and that means I'm all the way done. Like I'm, I'm, there's no way I'm going to stop at halfway. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? So like, I'm already done 11 of them. How can I stop now? How can I quit now? You know? So unless a leg falls off or like, like even then, like, unless something really catastrophic happens, there's no way I'm stopping. So Zach, this is the irony is yesterday was halfway. And after he's like that, that halfway mark and like invincible, like mm -hmm. nothing, not, not backing down now at any point then goes to sleep wakes up the worst smoke we've encountered yet worse than revelstoke yeah. today completely like, oh, wow. i had a headache all day long just from having the window open and, and it coming into the room mm -hmm. um and i'm not outside running in it like he is right and wakes up or with wakes up with his swollen foot his left foot is swollen i think there could be some broken potentially broken bones maybe some small bones in yeah. there but it's it's pretty swollen like you could see it you know protruding out oh of his so imagine putting his shoes on uh so it's kind of funny that he was like you know mindset though is invincible mm -hmm. because he reached that halfway mark but then the body is like oh i gotta yeah. i got something for you <laughs> you know what's funny man like uh, when i was out there today <clears throat> i felt pretty decent like actually like those i mean the last 3k i was you know it's getting hot right now so I kind of managed the the pace on the last two or three K, but like for the first 20, 30, I was, I was fine. Yeah. It was good. Are people I looking at you though? Well, there's no one in this area. Yeah. There's no oh, one here. Interesting. It's so remote here, man. So like starting tomorrow, we'll probably start seeing some people because we're going to be getting into Lillooet. And then from Lillooet, we get to Pemberton, Pemberton, then we get to Whistler. So then it's going to really start getting like a lot mm -hmm. more people, like a lot more people. Um, and then once we get to the lower mainland, I suspect it'll be more people seeing. But um, when we're in Revelstoke, yeah, people are, I don't know, were people watching? Like, I don't know. I guess so. I don't pay attention, man. You're so in your zone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, I don't pay more, attention. More so when I'm traveling, when I'm behind you with the truck, when you've got the signs on, yeah, people yeah. are watching then. But they're not, yeah. where did we go after Revelstoke, where we saw the firefighters on the side of the road, the volunteers? Oh, People that was like Chase. That. that was in Chase. Right. Chase BC. Oh, yeah. Chase, oh, man. We went to yeah. Chase BC and uh, we were stopping off to, I can't even remember what we were doing. We were stopping to grab something. Mm -hmm. And there were some volunteer firefighters from the Alberts Lake. That's the name of the place? Adams Lake. Adams Lake. Adam Kirk. Adams Lake. Small little area. And there were, it was a group of um, Indigenous um, men and, and one lady, all volunteers. And they were going, heading out to, um adams mm -hmm. lake area to fight fires for the 10 to 16 hours and um so after i was talking with them for about 10 15 minutes and just kind of listening to their stories and how they're um working full time and afterwards going to fight fires and on their own time volunteering and so when so i mean then i so i think about that kind of stuff when i'm running in the smoke i'm like these these people are <laughs> they're working mm -hmm. and they're doing like and they're helping their communities do it the way they're doing it I mean, I'm just running, running for five hours or whatever. So it's it's if I put it in a different perspective, it's um, it's it's not that hard. Yeah. And they have that equipment on them and the weight and what they're. 
the heat but it's helping their breathing, but it's also adding weight. And yeah, exactly. And you're by the fire. So imagine what you're feeling like. Oh my goodness. It's it's probably like, I don't know, man, like super, super hot. Man. It's like, I don't even know what the temperature is going to be. Yeah. Better control. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But yeah, kudos to those people for sure. What do you guys hope for or envision in Victoria at the Bastion? Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. All I can say is what I'm going to do. How are you going to feel? What do you think you're going to feel? I'm going to be honest? emotional for sure. Yeah. 100%. I get emotional thinking about it right now. Because um, I've been thinking about this for a year. I've been training for a year. So it's uh, it's emotional because I know there's a bunch of names on that monument. So I already know what I'm going to do when I'm there. I'll be paying my respects. What about you for yourself, Julia? <laughs> I don't want to get emotional right now, too. Um, I think, yeah, it will be. It's There's been a lot of emotion on this whole trip. So I think they will, you know, when it, it will... <laughs> I don't know what to expect. Yeah, the highs, the lows, left, rights. Yeah. I feel uh, we'll we'll feel a lot that on that day. I, I think. think it's going to be an awesome experience. It'll be like um, a culmination of a group of people getting together, helping each other to achieve a common goal, and all coming to a head on one day. That's why it's emotional because mm -hmm. it's not me by myself, man. There's a ton of people helping me do this. A ton of people. <clears throat> so I'm when it's difficult, I think about everybody. When you look at going across Canada in the future or near future, why that? Why Canada? Yeah, and why not just stop at BC? I mean, it's, no, no. <laughs> for the regular Joe Blow like myself, you know, it, it's impressive what you're doing. You know, um, we're looking at it from a sideline, cheering you on and celebrating this because we don't know many folks like this. You're doing this for all of us. I mean, um, well, there's so inspiration in it, man. I might not go run 22 kilometers or 22 marathons, but frig, I'm going to put away my laundry today. You know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. It's like, if he can do that, why can't I do that? And guess what? You're looking at it as somebody else. If the firefighters can do that. Why can't I do this? That's yeah. the impact. That's, that's the, the impact. Well, that's the whole point, right? Isn't it? That's the it whole is, point. Yeah. Like, I have my skill set. Those firefighters have their skill set. Those cops, you have your skill set. Julia has hers. We all have our skill sets, right? No one's better than the other person. Mm -hmm. We all fit in like a puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. And and when you put all those pieces together, it makes a beautiful picture. So, yeah, maybe maybe what i'm doing might maybe possibly get attention maybe um why cross canada well just to your point man to inspire more to 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 see what i'm capable of to, to push my performance envelope to see how much i can do and then also through that to see if, if i can achieve that and overcome all the obstacles that i've had in my life and then try to um, overcome them. And then hopefully through that, maybe inspire one or two other people right. to maybe do something similar if they want. What's your recovery like right now? So you get home, you eat, do you go to bed right away? Are you stretching? Do you go in the bath and just no, I, I kind of warm water on you? <laughs> like, wh what are you doing right now for yourself? So, so here where we're at right now, it's kind of hot. So, and the sun doesn't go down till about like nine, nine thirty. So it's hard to get to bed early. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, but overall what I'm doing is as soon as I'm done the run, I'm just drinking, drinking, drinking as much liquid and eating as much as I can. And uh, I rest legs up, chill, watch TV or something. And, and that's pretty much it. Like I, I try not to think too much, but at, at the end of the day, I still have to, um, you know, call the hotel, call this, do that, do this. Like, so there are some logistical things that I'm still trying to do, but overall, yeah. 
in terms of recovery, I've been managing it pretty good, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, could be better, but overall, it's not bad. And, and things will get better, like logistics and, you know, it'll be, yeah. get more organized in the future. And, you know, we're learning as we go. And, yeah. you know, as as his uh, his goals get bigger and these events get longer, yeah. there's going to be a lot more organizing and a lot more help that we'll probably need. Yeah, I mean, I think I think in the next couple of years, like I think for next year, I already kind of have a rough idea of what I want to do, and if 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 uh, if I can start planning that, that's going to require a lot of hands on deck, and a lot of assistance. So you know, after I'm done this run, I'm going to probably spend some time figuring out how to properly do that, and maybe even outsource some of the planning and, and logistical planning, so that I don't have to do it. So, but once I'm done this, I'll spend energy thinking about it. You'll have enough time. Yeah. Well, hopefully at least a month or two. Our winters are long. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. But that doesn't well, stop you because you, you're still running in the winter, aren't you? Well, I mean, next year, I think I want to start earlier, right? Like, I don't want to start in the summer. Maybe we start in and around April, May next year or mm-hmm. something. We'll see. Cooler see season. Happens. Yeah. Cooler season. And, and I'm planning to do a longer distance. So, like, I'm doing 22 marathons right now. So, maybe it looks like 30 ultras. Maybe something like that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm tentatively thinking about maybe running from Thunder Bay to Victoria next year. So, oh, so that, that would be, I don't know, like 3000 kilometers. So, Hey, WestJet, if you're listening, mm-hmm. look it yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah, somebody, some, <laughs> and listen, if anybody out there who watches this, who knows how to uh, event or organize, plan something logistically, hit me up, man. <laughs> Cause uh, we could use some help. <laughs> It's not easy planning all that stuff. Oh my goodness. And you guys did this, uh, I don't know, so quickly. And just thank God for Sandman. That's amazing. Sandman was very helpful. We reached out to them. They they were right on board right away. And then, I mean, the various other companies, Lululemon has yeah. been supportive. Stonehouse Realty has been supportive. Like tons of other, like name Magnum Supplements. I mean, I can name a whole list of companies that have been helpful. The, the cream that you use for that, I'd say for recovery, he most often uses. Like, oh, ghost grappling. Yeah. I've been using the CBD cream on my knees and my feet uh, yeah. from ghost grappling. I've been using that almost every, well, every single day. Mm-hmm. And then I've been using uh, Grupo Nutrition, which is like my, my my fuel for when I'm running. I use that every single day. So there's been a ton of companies mm-hmm. that. So what is that nutrition exactly? Like, What does it do? It's formulated for me. Mm-hmm. So like, um, so when you're, for me, when I'm running, I require a certain amount of calories every hour and I need a certain amount of electrolytes. I need a certain amount of sodium. So this Grupo, it's a Canadian company based in Windsor and they, they formulate this stuff. So they make it and they make it for triathletes, ultra endurance, marathoners. It's, it's, it's a kind of a niche sort of uh, supplement, but it's for these types of events. And um, it's it's high grade, really high quality. So when you're using some of the some other electrolytes, you might get stomach upset or maybe mm-hmm. irritable bowels and these stuff. So with this one, I've had zero issues. Really good. Wow, that's fantastic. And Julia, you said you you're not working out like you used to or moving like you used to or are used to. How has that been for your mind? And uh, what do you do to kind of keep yourself sane through the process? Well, I I still keep as active as I can. I I am, okay, so in a way, I am used to having to pivot and Mm. make up workouts on the fly, or, you know, I'm used to over a decade in, you know, various different, on various deployments around Africa, right? And not always having a gym. So this isn't completely foreign to me at all. It's just, I've had the luxury of one full year now in Canada where I had a routine, for the first time in my life, had a routine and was going to a gym and going to my yoga studio and all those kind of things. So I might not be doing what my regular routine looks like, but it's still doable. So, you know, I've got my yoga mat out on the deck right now. I did yoga here the other day. Uh, I've done a couple runs with mm-hmm. him, mostly um, in Kamloops and Revelstoke. I got out and ran a little bit more. I've run a couple laps, you know, here with him, but um but but more so in those in those other cities. And that was really good. Actually, it was nice. I think the first few runs there was I went from 5K to 10K to 15K. Like by by the third day, I was at 15K. Nice. And yeah. I wouldn't normally do that. So even just the ripple effect he's having on, you know, like on me, on everyone across the country, across the world, 
Yeah, but it's, it's, you know, it's, just it's, me being with him, that affects me too. Right. So I'm not gonna, I don't want to be lazy and do nothing. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll make the most of it. It's a trip though, man. Like, like, yeah, she's running 15 K and have you, you've done that before, but like yeah. not, I mean, she did it not, fairly quickly. And then, yeah, but even so. just how she's saying like the ripple effects, okay, get this. I had a pretty, pretty cool message I got today. Right. And I it was pretty unexpected for me. And um, it was kind of cool just to get it. And it was from um, a corporal out at depot at the RCMP training facility. Okay. In Regina. And she um, is part of the fitness cadre at the uh, depot. So does all the training for the new recruits and the, the members that are there. And she created for the week, it's called a, a workout of the week, such in motion supporting such in motion 22 marathons 22 in 22 days i had no clue who this person was mm -hmm. no idea and she messaged me today with like a thing she made like a flyer with my logo on it putting the workouts and everything and saying any cadet or uh, member that does one of the workouts they'll be donating two dollars to honor house and i was like holy like mm -hmm. so like i didn't like and that's for me that's a big deal man like RCP training facility, one of the trainers out there and, and members and, you know. You don't talking, even know her. No, and just talking about what I'm doing. I mean, it's pretty cool, man. Of course. Yeah. There's been people impacted all over. We mm -hmm. we had, we have a guy in Inuvik. Is yeah, Inuvik. Is that, yeah. Is that north? Wow. Uh, but ev every day, so I'm doing, well, together, we've, we've collaborated on doing the Pick Up the Pace Challenge. And uh, so with Army of Angels, on, on that page as well we've been doing that and I set out the the rules as to take part in that challenge to you know push yourself pick up the pace I said uh do 12k steps a day a, or a 5k run or 22 push-ups a day or donate to honor house so there's four options so people can take part mm -hmm. a variety of different ways well this this guy up north is doing all four things every single day every single day and then tagging us and he's been so consistent and we don't know him we've never met him i think he's a, i think he's a, a member or a law enforcement officer and yeah um you know he, he came across my account and he, he thought it was kind of uh he thought it was cool so he started taking part in the challenge and every single day he's donated mm -hmm. and every single day he's run and push it like everything so it's like it's cool to see man like um because uh, most of the most part man i'm in my own world right just doing my own thing and and trying to push the the needle in a certain direction but not really looking behind me you know just kind of moving and just kind of doing the thing and um it's 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 humbling man i like uh, i put a wall up all the time because i'm a pretty sensitive guy but it's it's emotional every single day like seeing That's... a lot of stuff and mm -hmm. it's um it's impacting me in a positive way because i never thought in a million years i'd be i'd finish running 12 marathons in a row and people would want to I, don't, I never thought I could inspire a single person, man. So this is this is pretty cool. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys, uh, hopefully in Victoria and at the Bastion. I mean, yeah, man. That would be great. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs>